Welcome to Grace Baptist Church Service Online. I want to thank you for joining us. My name is Andy Prince. I'm the pastor of Grace Baptist Church. And if you're a first time guest, I especially want to thank you for joining us this morning. I'd like to encourage you to learn a little bit about our ministry by going to www.gbcbak.org. You can see some ways that we're still doing Bible studies and small groups and ministry for children and youth at this time. We wanna be able to help you and your family as we go through this crisis. And if there's anything that we can do for you, I hope that you will get in touch with us and we would love to minister to you. Well, let, let me open us up at, in prayer as we get started with our service. Father, we just wanna thank you so much for the opportunity to be able to come together this morning and to worship you. And I just pray that as we come and sing and pray and listen to your word, that you will use it to strengthen our faith. And Lord, if there's any uh, there out there who have never placed their trust in you, Lord, I pray today would be the day that they would be born again. And, and Lord, that they would come to know you as their Savior and Lord. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Some glad morning when this life is over, I fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away. I'll fly away, oh glory. I'll fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. When the shadow of this life have grown, I'll fly away. Like a bird from prison bars is flown, I'll fly away. I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. Just a few more weary days and then I'll fly away To a land where joy shall never end I'll fly away I'll fly away, oh glory I'll fly away When I die, hallelujah, by and by Hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. created one God almighty through your Holy Spirit conceiving Christ the Son Jesus our Savior I believe in God our Father I believe in Christ the Son I believe in the Holy Spirit our God is three in one I believe in the resurrection That He will rise again For I believe in the name of Jesus Our judge and our Suffered and crucified Forgiveness is in you D 
descended into darkness you rose in glorious life forever seated high i believe in god our father i believe in christ the son i believe in the holy spirit our god is three in one i believe in the resurrection that he will rise again for i believe in the name of jesus i believe in you i believe you rose again i believe that jesus christ the Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection that he will rise again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. I believe in life eternal. I believe in the virgin birth. I believe in the saints communion. And in your holy church, I believe in the resurrection, and Jesus comes again, for I believe in the name of Jesus, for I believe in the name of Jesus, for I believe in the name of Jesus. confess bowing here I find my rest and without you I fall apart you're the one that guides my heart Lord I need you oh
Jesus, you're my hope and stay. Today we're going to be looking at finding hope through the battles of life. We're going to be looking at the story of Gideon, and in just a few moments we'll be seeing a video that will be describing that scripture for us. Let's open up in a word of prayer. Father, I just pray that as we study today that you would open our eyes to your word and to help us find hope as we go through the struggles of life. And so, Lord, we just pray that your Holy Spirit would come and teach us now for your glory. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It was harvest time in Israel, and a palpable sense of anxiety was in the air. At any moment, the wary farmers might lift their eyes to see a tidal wave of Midianite soldiers pouring down from the hills like a flash flood from a broken dam. The Bible describes the Midianites as a nation of grasshoppers. Whenever the harvest was ripe, they would descend upon Israel's fields and crops in vast numbers like a swarm of locusts, leaving nothing in their wake but destruction and desolation. The Israelites went on the defensive, hunkering down in caves, hiding in the mountains, and building protective strongholds. The nervous harvesters quickly reaped what they could and hid it away in anticipation of an imminent invasion. God had a plan to deliver Israel from the hand of Midian, and he had chosen just the man for the job. But God's choice seemed highly unlikely. Gideon was not a superhero by any stretch of the imagination. He was a victim of his society's ills, a man who had been influenced by the climate of cowardice that had crippled and enslaved the Israelites. He was such a prisoner of fear that he would hide in a wine press to thresh his small harvest of wheat. A wine press is no place to thresh wheat. But Gideon had chosen this inappropriate place because he was afraid of the Midianites. He was afraid of losing his harvest and his life, so he hid both underground. It was in this dungeon of fear that the Lord found Gideon, frustrated, trembling, and perspiring. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, you mighty man of fearless courage. No one would have anticipated the Lord's declaration that day. Gideon, the Lord says, you are a mighty man of fearless courage. Where others saw a coward, God saw a deliverer. One of the great military battles of our time was the Battle of Waterloo in 1815. It was between the British and the French. And the British troops were led by the Duke of Wellington, and the French were led by Napoleon. The English had lived for 20 years with the dread that Napoleon might come and invade them, and so they were anxiously waiting the news of this battle. There was no electronic means to let people know what took place, not even a telegraph. And so what was used was the, over the English Channel, there were different stations of towers of seamen who would be able to have flagmen signal what had taken place. The first signalman spelled out, Wellington defeated. And this message was sent along the line. And as it reached England and came to London, there was a dense, thick fog and so they were not able to fully read everything that was sent. But what they heard was that they had lost the battle. And the people began to live in fear and dread 
and despair and hopelessness grip the city. You know, many of us in our society are living with dread and fear and hopelessness as we go and we battle this pandemic. And today I want us to see in the story of Gideon that Israel was in the same place. We read in the beginning of Judges chapter 6 that Israel was in a time where the Midianites were coming and invading their land and taking over their crops and killing their animals. And the people of Israel were not able to enjoy all the hard work as they were bringing in the harvest and, and they were having to hide in caves in, in fear of, of the people. And so in many ways, they were living in a, in a quarantine that was much worse than ours. We can at least go to a store and get food, even though they may not have our favorite things. Uh, we may not be able to go to the movie theater, but at least we can watch some stuff on TV. But for the people of Israel, they were facing a very difficult time And it was lasting not just a few weeks, months, maybe a year, a year and a half is projected by some, but this was for seven years. And yet in this time, they were able to find hope in this battle. And today, I want us to see that we can find hope too. And the first thing I want you to see is that we need to cry out to God in order to find this hope. Notice in Judges chapter 6, in verse 6, we read, So Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midnights, and the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. And it came to pass when the children of Israel cried out to the Lord because of the Midnights, that the Lord sent a prophet to the children of Israel who said to them, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, I brought you from Egypt and brought you out of the house of bondage. And we see here that when Israel recognized their despair and and that they could not fix this themselves, they cried out to the Lord and he heard and he reminded them by sending him his word that there was hope, that God had rescued them before and, and that he was still with them. We looked at a few weeks ago when we looked at hope in the midst of suffering and looking at Romans chapter 8, and we looked at this idea of groaning, the idea of expressing our pain to God and knowing that there is a God who cares. And and this is where we must begin. We must begin by, by crying out to God. This week, we're looking at 2 Chronicles 7, 14, every uh, morning at 7.14 in the morning and at 7.14 in the evening during this week. And, and it reads, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. And we see that that when God's people will come and cry out to him, that God listens. And this is the hope that we have. That if we're going to see the healing of our land, then it's going to have to be God's people pouring out their heart to him. The second thing I want you to see is not only do we have to cry out, but we must be ready to listen. And we see in verse 11 of chapter 6 in Judges, it reads, Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the Tibereth tree, which was in Ophrah, which belonged to Joash the Abazarite, while his son Gideon threshed wheat in the winepress in order to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you. You mighty man of valor. And what we see here is that God came to to Gideon in the presence of the angel of the Lord. And and many believe that the angel of the Lord is is a reference to to the pre-incarnate Christ. And so it wasn't that 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 Gideon came to God, but but God came to him. And and now it was time for, for Gideon to listen to God and to, to be able to, to adjust his thinking and begin to follow what God wanted to do. And I'm not saying that, that this virus is actually caused by God and is a punishment upon our land, but I do believe 
that God is using this to awaken us, to listen to him and see if there are things that need to change in our life. This is a great time for reflection. It's a great time to examine ourselves. It's, it's a great time to, to really value our, what is most important and to really look at our relationship with Christ and to see if we're where we're supposed to be. And God wants to bless us just as God wanted to bless Israel back then. But there were things that he needed to get their attention. And and I hope that that in this time, we realize that we can't trust in the stock market. We can't trust in our elected officials. We can't trust that our job will get us through. All these things are temporary. They can be gone so quickly as we can see, but there is one place that we can go and receive help, and that is God. And that is why it's so important that we listen to him. And Gideon was here, and we see that he was hiding out. He was actually in a wine press. It shows that there wasn't much wheat to be able to just do it there and to thresh it. And and he was hiding from the midnights. And it's in this place where he is scared and he is defeated that God comes to him and encourages him and speaks to him. And I want you to see that God will speak to us even in our times of being scared and defeated. And if you're out there today, I hope that you will listen to the voice of God and let him speak hope into your life today. The third thing I want you to see is that we need to place our faith in God. As Henry Blackaby shares in the book, Experiencing God, there always comes what we call a crisis of belief, which requires faith and action. It's where the rubber meets the road. And it was good that Gideon listened to God, but now was he actually going to follow and do what God said? And it wasn't about what he felt. It wasn't about what he could think. It wasn't even about what he could see. It was about, am I going to listen and obey God? And we see here in uh, Judges 6, 13, it reads, Gideon said to him, Oh, my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? And where are his miracles? which our fathers told us about saying, did not the Lord bring us out from Egypt? But the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. And so the first thing I want you to see that Gideon had to believe was that he had to believe in miracles again. And and we need to be able to do the same. We need to believe in what God says Notice what it says in verse 15 of chapter 6. He reads, So he said to him, Oh my Lord, how can I save Israel? Indeed, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said to him, Surely I will be with you, and you shall defeat the Midianites as one man. And, And so what we see here is that Gideon is reminded that God is the one who has called him. And when God called him, God called him not to live in fear, not to live in in, in, um, weakness, but to remember that he was called a mighty man of valor. And, And even though Gideon was in this dark place, and even though Gideon was, was in this place of being scared and, 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 and hiding out, God comes to him and doesn't look at, at where he is and who he is right now, but he looks at the potential of who he could be if he would give his life over to him. And Christian, today, if you will give your life over to God and you will allow yourself to be full of the Spirit, you can live with this hope and live with this victory, remembering that God is a God who still does miracles. And the greatest miracle that God ever does is that He saves us. That's what Jesus said when when the disciples looked and they were excited about seeing people healed and cast out demons, he reminded them and he said, listen, the greatest miracle is that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. You have to remember that I died for your sin and I rose again three days later and, and I come and I now live inside of you and I empower you and I change you. 
And, and we need to remember that this salvation is the greatest miracle, but that doesn't mean that we limit God in recognizing that he still does miracles today. And the definition of a miracle is God doing something outside of nature, something supernatural. And, and when God does something, by definition, it's a miracle because it's outside of nature. It's outside of the normal because it is God who does it. And the Bible tells us in Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we need to come here and remember that our God is still at work. This is what John chapter 14, 12 says. This is Jesus saying this. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. And we need to come back today where we believe in God and believe God can do great and mighty things in and through us, even in this difficult time. And this is where Gideon had to change his thinking. He had to believe that the same God that, that rescued Egypt was the same God that was alive then. And we need to believe that the same God who rescued Jesus or that rescued Egypt and the same God that was with Gideon and the same God that rose Jesus from the dead is the same God who lives in us. That God does miracles and we need to believe that. The next thing I want you to see that we have to have faith is, is, is to be able to join the battle. And, and, and we see here that too many Christians are often sidelined, but this is the time that, that Christians need to rally and put their faith in action. And, and the first thing I want you to notice is that we need to realize that God knows that we are weak. Even when he's calling us, he knows that we are frail. But, but even in that frailty, God knows that he will receive the glory when, when he does the work in and through us to be able to do these things that will have an eternal impact for his kingdom. Notice what 1 Corinthians verse chapter 1, verse 25 says, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world and the things that are despised, God has chosen. And the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are. That no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him you are in Christ Jesus who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that it, as it is written, he who glorifies, let him glory in the Lord. And we need to remember that it's not by our might, but it's by his grace that he makes us strong. So we have a responsibility to be willing to join the battle and, and Gideon had to do that. The next thing we see is that we also have to get rid of our idols in order to join the battle. We, we read in uh, verses 25 and through 27 that Gideon came and got rid of the idols of, that were in his community. And he did it at night because he was afraid to do it during the day, but the next morning they see that it's gone and the people that were with them must have ratted him out because they somebody comes and says, hey, Gideon did this. And they were mad at him and they wanted to, to destroy him and his father steps up for him and says, listen, if Baal is the real God, let him defend himself. And and it's interesting that, that if we're going to join the cause of Christ, we, we can't be divided. We can't have idols that that um, distract us from giving everything we can to God and giving ourselves fully to him. I think one of the great things about this quarantine is that it has really caused a reflection in me to see some of the things that I found hope and confidence in. 
I think we sometimes look at our job. We look at the things that we have. We look at the comfort of living. We look at the ability to go on vacation and just go to the grocery store. Some of you have been separated from your family and all these things that, 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 that aren't necessarily bad things, but, but they become things that, that we put our trust and our hope and our confidence in. And as they've just come away and tumbled down, we're driven to the place where we must come and be dependent upon Christ. And if we're going to join the battle, we have to come to the place where we're ready to get rid of our idols. And notice what it says in Judges chapter 6, verse 34. It says, But the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon. Then he blew the trumpet, and the Abezerites gathered behind him. And this is when the Spirit of God can use us the most. It's when we come to the place and we, we confess our sin and repent and remove the idols from our life. The third thing I want you to see about joining the battle is we can't come to the place where we're testing God. We notice in verse 36, it says, So Gideon said to God, If you will save Israel by my hand, as you have said. And, and so Gideon comes here and he has doubt. And he comes and asks the God, Well, if you're really going to be able to do this after God had already told him, listen, I'm going to use you to, to go and, and be the deliverer. And here's Gideon. And he says, well, 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 God, I need a sign. I need you to show me. And I want you to understand that this is not an example for us to follow. This was a God who was very gracious to a man who was scared and, and, and gave him this sign so that he would continue in, in God's grace to be used. But, but true faith doesn't come to the place where we come and test God. We, our pattern is not to follow Gideon. Our pattern is to follow Jesus. And Jesus would just hear the voice of God and he would go and bay. And I want to encourage you today, don't, don't put God to a test. Don't come and say, if you'll do this or that, then I'll follow. Make Jesus your model. And, and just when you hear what God tells us to do, go and do it. And God has called us to be involved, Christian, in this battle today. And, and let's just do it. The fourth thing I want you to see is we have to, as we join the battle, fight with those who are called with us. We read in Judges chapter 7, verse 8, So the people took provisions and their trumpets in their hand, and he sent away all the rest of Israel, every man to his tent, and retained those 300 men. Now the camp of Midian was below him in the valley. And Gideon went from an army of 33,000 to 300 pretty quick. And in our mind, we, we, we tend to think that everyone should be a part of the battle and everybody that is at the part of a church should, should be involved and use their gifts. And man, I wish that was the case. But the reality is, is we just have to go to war with who's willing to go. And, 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 and God weeds that out. And, and when this virus ends and church opens back up, I don't know everybody who's going to return. I don't know who all who's going to be fully committed. I don't know if there'll be some who will, will have sort of gotten weakened and, 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 and given up and, and not come back. But, but this is what I do know that the ones that do come back, we're going to have a fire that says, God, we're ready to go to war with you and allow you to do great and wonderful things in and through us. And, and God's going to give us everything that we need. And so I want you to know that with whatever we have, we're going to go and do it. And notice they didn't have the greatest weapons. They went to war with a trumpet and a, a pitcher or a jar and a torch. But God used that because God did the fighting for them. And God will do the battle for us. And he is the one who will bring victory. Our job is to be faithful and, and, and to, to worship and to study his word and to pray and to minister. And God will show up and bring the victory. The fourth thing I want you to see is that we have to fight until victory. The victory was achieved and it was done through the power of God. But we need to understand 
that even though this fight was over, there's a truth that Gideon needed to remember. And that was that one battle is not the war. And that's a truth that we need to remember. That one battle is not the war. In chapter eight, we see that this battle continues. That there's two more kings that were able to get away. And so Gideon's going to chase them down as he's chasing them. He stops in some Israelite cities to, to be able to get replenished with his uh warriors that were with him. And unfortunately, they didn't want to help out. And so he had to continue to go in a weakened state and he's able to finally go and take care of the um, getting these two kings that had escaped and, and going back and bringing justice on these cities that had uh, neglected him. But, but what we see here is that Gideon had to continue one battle after another battle after another battle to win the war. And the same is true for us that there's going to be many battles and COVID-19 is a big one, but it won't be the only one in our life. And while we have these battles that are out there that we can see, the more important battles are the spiritual battles. And, and true success doesn't come if we win a battle. The true success comes if we win the war. And that leads us to the next thing I want us to see when we're fighting for victory. It's not about our words, it's about action. And, and we see here that, that Gideon says the right thing in verse 22 and 23 of chapter eight. Notice he says, then the men of Israel said to Gideon, rule over us, both you and your son and your grandson also, for you have delivered us from the hand of Midian. But Gideon said to them, I will not rule over you, nor shall my son rule over you. The Lord shall rule over you. And so Gideon here says the right thing. He says, listen, I, I'm not going to be your king. The Lord needs to be your king. So Gideon says the right thing. But then right after that, Gideon says, hey, I want some of the spoils that come from the victory. And you know what? I want to have many wives and I want to have a concubine and, and now I want to make an ephod and, and I want to have that and, and sort of represent myself as, 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 as sort of a, this spiritual person. And, and, and you know what? It's okay as, as you see this because it represents me. And, and the people began to worship this ephod and, and it began to become an idol. And, and so what led Israel into this this time and challenging of, of worshiping idols and bringing upon this discipline of God. Now Gideon was doing the same thing, but was comfortable with it because the people were recognizing him and applauding him. And he was having the wealth and he was having the fame and he was having the accolades. And this was probably the biggest challenge we face is how do we live with success? And many times when we begin to have victory in a battle, we begin to get overconfident and prideful thinking we did something. And we got to remember the weakness of which we are called from. And that if God does anything, it's him that receives the glory. That it was him who did the battle. Gideon didn't defeat the enemy. God did. God just used Gideon. And when God does things in and through our world today. He uses his church, but grace, it's, it's not us who does it. It's God. And we need to remain humble and, and, and we can say the right things, but sometimes our actions are robbing the glory of God. And I hope today that, that, that you will not live for wealth. You won't live for recognition, but that you'll remain humble and point people to God. And the last thing I want you to see as we fight for victory, that we need to understand that we're leaving a legacy. And the victory isn't just about how our life is, but what about the people who are following us? Not just our physical children, but our spiritual children as well. As, as we influence others, how are they going to be affected? And, and so we see here that... Um, there was a legacy that was, lift, that was left. And so Gideon, 
son who was, comes from his concubine, after Gideon dies, decides that he wants to become the ruler. And so he makes himself the ruler and the people embrace that. And the first thing that he does is he goes and he kills Gideon's other 70 sons and only one escaped, the youngest. And, and, and here we see that Gideon's life's legacy is that he lost his children, except for the, the one, and the one that was from the concubine becomes this terrible ruler that is selfish and worships idols and is greedy and only about power. And where do you think he learned that? He learned it as he watched his dad. And this is so important. It, it's not just about being able to win a battle. And it's not just about winning this battle with COVID-19 and the pandemic and maybe your job and the issues you're facing right now. But I want you to understand it's about finishing the race. It's about winning the war. And you can't do that on your own. The only way that can be done is in the power of Jesus Christ. Jesus died for our sins. And if you're here today and you recognize, you know what? I give in to sin. I live for sin. I live for my selfish ways. I live for myself and I want to be free from that because I realize there's no peace, there's no hope, there's no joy there. The legacy I'm going to leave behind is not going to be one that is good. And you understand that Jesus came and he died in your place for your sin and he rose again three days later and he comes and he gives us life and he gives us the Holy Spirit that, that when we put our trust in him, the Holy Spirit indwells us and now he is the power and the strength as we yield our lives life to him to be able to help us not only win battles, but win the war and to be able to be assured of victory and hope. And today, if you've never placed your trust in Jesus Christ, today I want you to see there's hope in this battle. Not, not just to get over this crisis, but to be over sin and to be over death. And my hope is that you've put your trust in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And if not, I hope you'll do that today. When we look back at that battle of Waterloo and the British living in defeat, the next day the fog actually lifted in London and the rest of the message was able to come through. And this is what the message read that was actually sent. Wellington defeated the enemy. And now the city went from despair and defeat to laughter and celebration and hope. And I want you to know today, Jesus Christ has defeated the enemy. He has defeated Satan. He has defeated sin. He has defeated death. He has defeated COVID-19 because it has no hold on us. He has defeated everything that, that, that can bring man down because we are assured not to dwell in this life forever, but that one day we will be with him in his kingdom in heaven where there's no more sin, no more sickness, no more pain, no more death. But we're also assured that he will give us the strength to be able to get through the battles of this life and win the war and bring him glory. And again, I want to close as we've looked at this verse a couple times in this series. But again, I want us to look at Romans 8, verse 37 through 39. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. To be more than a conqueror means that it's not that we just barely squeak through, but that we win and we win big and there's total confidence. And the verse continues, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. 
Today in the battle, there is hope. And our Lord is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He fights for us. So stay close to him and follow him. Live in the victory that he will provide. And remember, there are others who are watching the way that you're going to live and they're going to follow you. Let's pray. Father, we just want to thank you for this reminder that in the battle, which is tough and real, that there is a God who is real, who fights for us. And Lord, while we have the temporary battle of this pandemic, Lord, there's an eternal battle for our soul. And we thank you, Lord, for the lesson today that there is hope in the battle and that it's through a relationship with your son, Jesus Christ. And I pray for any today who have never put their trust in him, Lord, who are defeated by sin and death, and today they live in despair and fear and discouragement and hopelessness. I pray today that they would say, God, I'm sorry for the way that I've been living my life. Lord, I've been selfish. I've been living for myself. And Lord, I want to live differently because I recognize where this road leads. And Lord, I ask that you would forgive me and I'm ready to go a different way. And I believe that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, God in flesh, who lived perfect, who died in my place and paid the penalty for my sin, which was death. And he rose again three days later and I put my trust in him and I am ready to follow him. And I believe that your spirit will come and live in me as I ask right now for you to save me, Jesus. And I will follow your ways for your glory. Lord, I pray for those who have said that prayer, that Lord, that you would strengthen them today and for your those who are Christians who are already in the battle. Lord, I pray today that they would receive the hope, that they would hear the message. Lord, that you call those who are weak and say you are mighty men of valor. You are mighty warriors. And God, I pray that we would not go by how we feel or by what we think, but that today we would claim who we are in you and we would live as mighty warriors for your glory. And it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. If you made a decision today for the first time to make Jesus Christ your Savior and Lord, made that decision to turn from your sin and to put your trust that he died on the cross for you, and paid your penalty in full and three days later rose again from the dead and you're ready to follow him in his ways. We're excited about that and wanna rejoice with you. And we'd like to be able to help you grow in your relationship with Jesus. So I'd like for you to take out your phone and text the word HOPE to 661-228-0556. You'll get a text back and if you'll just respond to the information to ask, we'll be able to send you a book that will help you begin this new relationship with Jesus. I also want to encourage you, if you're a Christian here today and you're going through some battles, I want you to know you're not doing it alone. There's others who would love to be able to pray with you right now. And so if you'll text the word pray to this same number, 661-228-0556, I want you to know that our staff and our elders will be joining in and lifting up your request. So I hope that you'll do that in just a moment as we get ready to listen to another song from Adam. But before we do, I want to remind you to continue to be faithful members of Grace in giving your tithes and your offering to the church. You can do that through visiting our website at www.gbcbak.org. We also have an easy way for you to be able to give through texting. It's a different number. It's 661-276-8558. And then all you have to do is simply text the amount and the fund that you want to go to, either the general fund, the building fund, or the mission fund. And then you'll get a link sent back to you to finish that transaction. Or you can still mail it to 2550 Joetta Avenue, Bakersfield, California, 93312. We also have the office open on Mondays if you would like to drop it off between 9.30 and 3.30 on Mondays. Well, let's prepare our hearts 
to think about any decisions that we might want to make um, with the Lord as we listen to Adam sing, and maybe you'd like to take out your phone and text at this time the decision of hope. If you made that decision for the first time, maybe you have a prayer request, or maybe at this time you would like to give your offering. As the deer panteth for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship thee. You are my strength, my shield To you alone May my spirit heal You alone Are my heart's desire And I long to worship Thee You're my friend and you are my brother even though you are a king i love you more than any other so much more than anything you alone are my strength my Thank you, Praise Team, for leading us again in music. Today for our prayer time, I'd like for us to take a moment and think about those who maybe are going through some extreme battles as we face this crisis. And one of those is uh, our government leaders. You know, some of us may not like some of them, but the reality is, is they're facing some difficult decisions. And our responsibility, the Bible says, is to pray for those who are over us. And so I'd like for us just to take a moment to pray for our local, state, and national leaders and ask that God would just give them his wisdom as they make decisions during this critical time. The second area I'd like for us to pray for is those who have been going through the battle of grief. You know, there's many who have lost loved ones over the past few months, and they haven't been able to have a funeral service. Some of them were not able to be there with their loved one as they passed away, and that can be very difficult. So I'd like for us to remember those today who are going through grief recently and lift them up at this time. Well, again, thank you for joining us. I hope that you will join us tonight at 714 
on our Facebook live stream as we will be having a devotion and a prayer time. And then we'll be doing again that Monday through uh, Thursday. And so hope that you will join us, which leads to the National Day of Prayer. On Thursday evening, our small groups are going to be coming together and having communion. We're going to be doing a drive-in communion with social distancing. And it'll be a time to be able to come and have communion. And we're also going to be giving away some little gifts of appreciation to the women of our church. We'll be giving out one per family and then be giving out another gift for you to give to someone else to be an encouragement to them. Also, we've had some yard signs made, and many of you have them, that let people know that we're praying for them. We're also going to be giving you some packets to be able to hand out. And what we'd like for you to do is just to take a prayer walk in your neighborhood and pray for families and then just place these little door hangers on their doors just simply to let them know that we're praying for them and to invite them to listen to our service online. I want to thank you for, again, being with us and hope that you'll join us for Sunday school class that starts at 11 a.m. today. You can go to our website at www.gbcbak.org and you can click on the Sunday school tab. There you will see the classes that are offered and just click on the Zoom link for the ones that will be appropriate for your family. We have classes from children all the way through senior adult. We also have small groups that meet through the week and you can click on that tab and see the time and date that those classes are being offered as well. Next week, we're going to be looking at hope when dreams seem broken. We'll be looking at the story of Hannah as it's gonna be Mother's Day. I hope that you will invite a friend and join us again next week. God bless.